Uh, my audio. Oh, good. All right. Hello, everybody. I am the Spectre. Joining me is Daredevil Dan, and this is Southern Cross Dota's Tides Wrath Season 3, The Knockout Playoffs. This is a best of three between TOA and Rest, Rest, Rest. The winner will advance. The loser goes home. How are you going, Dan? Pretty good. I'm pretty excited to watch this. I know, well, we know two of the guys out of Rest, 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 Tondas and uh, the Evil Twig, both casters. Uh, who actually are casting some of this event, I believe, uh, when they're not playing. Uh, and I believe you know a couple of the guys out of TOA? Or at yeah, least I know, I know Tob Zeno and Bok Choi. They kind of hang around in the stream sometimes. I know they were um, trivia winners at some point while watching my stream. So good, good to have kind of return players. Yeah, it's nice to see faces, you know. Uh, faces, you know. <laughs> Names, you know. We don't know their faces. <laughs> but uh, we see standard bands as normal and... This is interesting. Io and Chaos Knight first picks really old school. Well, not that old school, but, you know, sort of very strong about six to, six to eight months ago sort of thing. Yeah, I was going to say, Wisp isn't really often picked up in Australian Dota. I, I think I've seen him picked up in maybe seven-ish games out of about a hundred. Um, it's just someone that kind of drifts in and out. He gets shut down really easily in tri-lanes, but, I mean, if you go with the Chaos Knight, you always have the dual mid lane option if you want to do that. Um, it's just, I don't think Wisp is great in a tri lane, especially against a Visage. More than likely, we'll see Rest, Rest, Rest pick up Nyx here as well, which would make basically the best tri lane support combo you can get at the moment, in my opinion, at least. Yeah, pretty much. You've got the solid lockdown, you've got the slow, the nuke, the stun. Even uh, the carapace very good because you can activate it and run through the uh, run through the tether from the IO. So getting that easy stun off for free, basically, every time you want it. But uh, they're going to pick the Darks here up, so getting the solid offlane before they pick a support. I mean, the support pool's so big at the moment for top tier supports. You don't really need to pick them up that quick. And when there's a Darks here sitting there, you pick the Darks here. It falls into any lineup well. And generally what you want to do against a Wisp is run a five-man lineup. And Darks here fits that perfectly. I think TOA can kind of play into this. I mean, Chaos Knight's main strength, yes, it is right-click, but it's more illusion right-click. By himself, just one Chaos Knight isn't too scary, and I mean, they could always pick up something like the Lone Druid, where all of your items are on the bear, so that Darkseer wall doesn't really help too much, so... It's something that TOA could think about, um, you know, kind of try and counterpoint that Darkseer a little bit, but yeah, you're right, he's such a strong offlaner, it'd be kind of stupid not to pick him up. Yeah, definitely, and... I, I mean, if you've got your own Chaos Knight too, you feel a little bit better in the fight. But uh, it does get a bit confusing when there's a wall. And even picking up something like a Disruptor now, you make, what, three of your own Chaos Knights against the four to seven Chaos Knights on the other team. Nobody really knows what's happening in that fight, <laughs> except the Chaos Knight. Yeah, exactly. It does get very, very messy without proper communication. I think the only thing that you could do is is save the reality rift until after the wall is dropped, so it's very, very obvious whose illusions are whose when they get dragged into that reality rift. But it's it's still going to be pretty chaotic. It's going to be hard for Visage to find the right person to soul assumption. He'll definitely have to be using that for picking off the supports. And so far, a lot of kind of big offlaners and carries being banned out. The supports are still really open, kind of Naga being the only one banned out, but, you know, who didn't see that coming? You know, Elder Titan, still surprisingly in the pool, could be picked up for either team. Yeah, either team could throw him in a mid. Uh, TOA could chuck him in the offlane as well. I'm, I'm really a big fan of the 0-4-4 combo uh, on the... Uh, on the Elder Titan, it just makes you so powerful in team fights, especially early when no one's really got plus armor items. So obviously taking away all your base armor and against something like a heavy edgy uh, carry, something like Rest 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 could pick up. It's it's definitely very powerful as they have a lot of base armor and they rely on it to stay alive. And all of a sudden you've got none. And against a Timbersaw, uh, ET doesn't fare that fantastically because of the reactive armor gives him bonus armor not extra base armor so it's it's a little bit helpful but Timbersaw another great hero very hard to counteract uh, they can't really pick up something like an alchemist or a Luna uh, now as their carry because Timbersaw does do very well against those two in an offlane especially if he gets that little bit of space to get those 
get those extra levels, and he can, you know, nuke down an alchemist very, very quickly. Well, yeah, the alchemists did get banned out by TOA, so they're not going to be afraid of that. But also a great hero to go against Darkseer. Again, the illusions of Timbersaw don't really do too much. It's Timbersaw's spell damage that he really, really relies upon. And we do see that Nyx being picked up by Restoress Rets, so... A good combo for an aggressive tri lane if they want to run it, and just as good as, as a defensive, but I think personally with the Visage and Nyx, I'd be running it offensively and put a Darkseer solo safe. But, I mean, Darkseer can always transition from the offlane into the jungle if he needs to, so uh, it really depends what kind of carry Rest 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 want to go for and how they think they're going to lane the Wisp and, and Io combo. Yeah, and we see the Rubik pick up from TOA now. Uh, a very good spell to steal on the side of Rest, Rest, Rest. Especially that wall. Uh, the wall and the vacuum. I mean, you've got Soul Assumption, the next Vendetta, the stun. He's like a kid in a, kid in a candy store right now. He's Basically, those three heroes all have fantastic spells. None of their spells are actually bad. They don't really have a dump spell. I suppose the Mana Burn sometimes is the dump for Nyx uh, when there isn't really a good target for it, but... The mana burn's pretty good against Darkseer. Uh, he relies a lot on having a large mana pool to cast his combos and be useful than just right at the start of the fight. So Rubik should have a good time here. He would have to watch out for the next ganks, though, uh, and obviously a prime target for that Visage to nuke down and kill. But uh, then again, so is Wisp. Yeah, i got to say, I really kind of like the Rubik pickup here. You can easily pick people up and throw them into the tether if they're in a slightly incorrect position. It's great for setting up the Chaos Knight, uh, kind of reality rift or even following it up it's just rubik's lift is so great because of that cast time it's what like 0.1 of a second it's virtually instant so there's nothing that you can really do to avoid it the gyrocopter is going to be picked up which is really going to make mincemeat of this wisp and rubik they have really really low armor to start with and they kind of in a tri lane situation, they're just really weak to harass. Probably Wisp and Rubik, probably like the two weakest in a tri lane situation. Yeah, and these two uh, don't favor that well in a tri versus tri, as most likely is going to be what Rest 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 are doing with a Gyrocopter and Nyx and a Visage. Pretty damn strong, uh, aggressive, and you've got that Rocket Barrage and the Slow from Visage and the Stun from Nyx. And if someone gets caught off guard at level one, it's an instant easy kill, and you've got, you know, your boots up on Gyro, or your flying courier, and extra wards, or just anything, really. Even boots pick up on Visage nice and early is very helpful. So yeah. they've got to be really careful if they do take this try versus try, which most likely we'll see. But how do you how do you think the Timbersaw would fare up against the Darkseer? Um, he, it's not the best against the Darkseer, to be honest, because that Ion Shell damage is magic. It doesn't proc the reactive armor. So when he tries to tank hits to get reactive charges up from the creep wave, as he normally does and just kind of sits there enjoying life, he's taking all of this ion shell damage, which isn't mitigated by the extra armor he gets. It doesn't add to the armor stacks. So while he can survive slightly better than some heroes because he still gets reactive from creeps, of course, uh, Darkseer is one of the better matchups against Timbersaw. It's it's not like it's a nature's prophet where Treants just do absolutely nothing and in fact just make your enemy even stronger. Um, uh, out of all the offlaners, I think Darkseer is definitely the best to go one-on-one -on -one against the Timbersaw. Yeah, I'd have to agree there, as you put it. Uh, the reactive armor doesn't really help against a Darkseer. And Darkseer, with that surge, it's, it's harder for the Timbersaw to dive him and get those early kills. I think once Timbersaw hits 6, Darkseer's in a little bit of trouble. But uh, depending how it goes down. But we'll just have to see. I think a lot of that matchup would be on player skill once Timbersaw hits sort of 6 or 7. Because it's pretty dangerous for both of them at that point. Because obviously you've got uh, the opportunity to get the uh, double iron shell out. And you don't really notice how much health you're losing until you're almost dead with double iron shell. Because you, you, know, you lose all your health and four or five seconds of tanking them both so it gets a bit dangerous yeah it really does sneak up on you and i think what toa really need to do is try and predict what rest 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 want to do with their lanes like from what i see it would be pretty stupid not to try and try versus try rest 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 try just completely obliterates toas in my opinion like the chaos knight won't be able to farm safely with a visage and gyrocopter being able to harass 
and if he comes in close at all, an instant Nyx Assassin stun is, is basically a kill with the slow from Visage, the Rocket Barrage damage, and then a Soul Assumption on top. So they really need to find that Triverse Solo situation where they'll fare a lot better. Um, but this Clockwork pickup as well, do you think Timbersaw or Clockwork is going to go into that mid lane? Uh, they can do either. I'd prefer the Timbersaw mid, but then the Clockwork matching up against yeah, the Darkseer exactly. isn't the best. Uh, unless you can get the Cog Harass on really early and drain all his mana, uh, it doesn't really work that well. But it depends. I mean, it's open for us, and they're going to pick up the puck. So I would say the Timbersaw's the Timbersaw is going to go mid. I I wouldn't I wouldn't put the Clockwork against the puck. Uh, he'd just get severely outlined and be able to do basically nothing. Yeah, the Timbersaw is great against puck because. You can still phase shift that Whirling Death. It does have a small amount of cast time where you can dodge it, but you really need to be on your wits. So it's going to be more down to personal skill rather than just clockwork being crapped all over by, by a puck. Uh, but that being told, uh, we can introduce the teams on the side of Rest, Rest, Rest. We have the Evil Twig on Darkseer, Kilted on the Nyx Assassin, Tondas on the Gyrocopter, Lethal on the Visage, and Miguel on Puck. And over on TOA, we have Tobzino playing the Wisp. Bok Choy is playing that Chaos Knight. Ocelot on the Rubik. Archer is playing the Clockwork. And good old Selena Gomez is playing the Timbersaw. I'm being told that you need to turn on your open mic. Probably do, considering <laughs> it's not on. That would be a lot better for Dota TV. <laughs> Probably. I mean, maybe, you know. It so, it looks like they're running a safe lane tri lane at the moment. I really think they should it's... have gone aggressive with it. Um, or, I don't know, actually, because the Darks is down here, he may just be soloing and they're looking for early kills, down. maybe. They've already put down a lane ward, so they're going to get vision of the lane. A kind of an odd position. Most people choose to place it here because it gives you kind of the vision of them going in. Of course, that ward will still spot that out in this area, but you also see them rotating in from the river slightly earlier yeah i think what i'd like to see them do is put the darks here down there and just get an easy kill trick them into thinking it's a 1v1 clock comes forward and kill them and then rotate leave the two supports here send tondas top get that first blood on the clockwork and then send them up maybe roam through mid and try and gank the uh Timbersaur as well might just be one of those little tricky plays that can get them that easy advantage and it, it does just look like they're gonna do it safe lane though and I, d I don't really feel that this is the best plan. I think Clockwork might come forward, though, thinking it's the 1v1 matchup, which he is doing at the moment. And if they can spot this out with that ward, which they can, they should be able to kill him straight away here. It should be a pretty easy kill. We see a, even a Tango being eaten through. The stun comes out. The Cog's getting thrown out as well, but Gyrocopter is way too far behind. Archer's going to get away with just a bit of harass damage. And they really needed that Rocket Barrage plus Soul Assumption to, to kill him off there. Yeah, they had to have Tonners there. He was just lacking behind. I think they should have waited for him to even come further more and then just wrapped around with the two supports and had Tonners just come up straight in his face uh, because it's better to spread out against uh, a Clockwork so you don't all get hit by a Cogs. Take that, you know, minus 80 health and damage straight away to three people because that really hurts your supports. Yeah, it really does. We're already going to see a stacked hard camp as well as a pull-through from the Dire side, so they're going to deny any experience that was going to that lane, but Darkseer knows what's up. He's He's gone jungle from level 1, so he's just hit his level 2, and he's going to be getting some decent farm here, whereas Clockwork is just being harassed out of lane so far. Really hasn't managed to do too much down here. He's delayed the creep waves a tiny bit, but... Now the Radiant supports are going to be pulling through uh, themselves, and it's going to be too much for this Clockwork to handle, and I guess that's the strength of a Darkseer versus a Clockwork. Yeah, I mean, they are gaining more than the opponent team, but they're not stopping the Chaos Knight, which, I mean, Gyrocopter, in theory, is definitely a harder light game carry. Unless the Chaos Knight gets a lot of space, and then the ganking comes out, and he keeps farming, picks up things like the Armlet, uh, the BKB, the Manta style, whatever really build he wants to go and You can overrun the guy, even if he's got, you know, flat cannon damage coming out. If you've got seven of you with a heart, you can't kill them. So it's it's kind of more even than something like an anti-major or PL late game. 
uh, because Chaos Knight doesn't do anything against a PL if they've got even farm. Yeah, not, not to mention that Gyrocopter at the heart of it, before he gets something up like a BKB Satanic or, you know, BKB and, and maybe even a Butterfly, he's quite a fragile carry. He's really open to the early aggression. We're going to see a Dire Courier kill in the mid lane. Selena Gomez picking, or rather Puck, picking up a nice kill with the orb forward. And, and that's what happens when you still have a walking courier. Yeah, you've got to be careful with those... Uh... Walking Curry is a, a little bit of a misplay. Both of these supports had the goal to upgrade it as well, so a little bit of forward thinking from that, uh, would have saved that Curry, but it's unfortunate. In these games, you know, you're in a best of three, the first match of the tournament. There's quite a lot of pressure to, to take your first match. I mean, it always puts you on a bit of a downer if you lose the very first match of, you know, the uh, casted stages. So um, maybe that getting them to, getting that a little, or... Just a little bit of a, a forgetfulness from the supports. Oh no, I know. And Miguel is just really owning this mid lane at the moment, sitting at twenty four and three up against Timbersaw's eight and zero. He's just uh, doing a lot of work here in mid lane. He's going to be dropping a little bit low to that whirling death because, of course, it is so annoying in the mid lane. But he's going to be just fine. He's been bottle crowing uh, as well as finding some nice runes. So yeah, so far Miguel sitting very very well ahead in mid lane. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you look at the CS, they're basically winning everything. We're going to see Archer in a little trouble, but it's just the Visage pu pushing them out. But Chaos Knight and Gyrocopter are equal. Puck's destroying mid, and Darkseer is destroying this clockwork because Darkseer has more than zero. I mean, you don't need much. It's sitting on 17 neutral creeps, obviously, so not as good as it's probably a lot of small camp as that is stacked right now. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely coming ahead. Even if it's only a small margin, gold ahead by 1,500. Experience actually equal, which is a little bit surprising, considering Clockwork has no experience. Yeah, it's because the Visage has just been harassing him out all the time. He's only just starting to get pool camp experience now, so he he's just about to break that level too. So it's been a bit of a trade, kind of harassing that Clockwork out so kind of fervently as the Visage has been. He's been trading his own experience for it. Yeah, I mean, not a bad trade, really. And uh, we see the Knicks now going up top to uh, stack the Ancients. I mean, they're just putting efficiency into their supports right now. Even coming in mid, just sort of sitting there, figuring out what they want to do, if they want to try and move down to Archer or fight this tri-lane or whatever. But I think this tri-lane is perfectly fine with not doing anything well, on the, the side of The cooldown's actually right going to come down. Archer's... Dropping quite low. They want that last hit, but he's going to escape with 35 health. Just not enough follow-up, and it's just a little bit of missing mana for that soul assumption, and being level 2 at this stage really hurts Visage. If he just had that one more level, he would have been fine. Ocelot and Kilted also running into each other near the shot, but nothing's going to happen. The Dyer's Courier does finally respawn, so... Selena's going to be a little bit happier there. We see a lift up there from Puck, on Puck instantly. Fadebolt gets thrown out. The silence as well. The coil gets thrown. Orbs out. Nyx comes through with a big stun and picks up the first blood on Rubik. That Nyx being there was absolutely perfect. And Meggle's doing really well on this Puck phase, shifting out of the damage. Uh, he, he, it looks like he knows definitely how to play this matchup and how to work the puck because he's not getting hit by any unnecessary damage. He knew that he wouldn't die there or else, you know, he wouldn't have dropped everything. He would have just tried to get away, but he dropped his silence, he dropped the orb and the ulti and managed to pick them up the first blood, which is great for them. The next getting all that extra experience as well. And Puck now sitting at level seven against the Timbersaw, he's yet to hit it. So even with that, he's at a, you know, lasted advantage by over double. And at a slight level advantage, which is always good. Yeah, he's definitely playing this mid lane while getting really aggressive. He knows he has the advantage, especially with a double damage room. We're going to see a rotation in from Rubik, though. Will they try and kill the puck again, knowing that he doesn't have the Dream Coil available this time? They're going to have to wait till he throws out the orb, I think. Yeah, if he throws out the orb in the wrong direction, he can definitely get caught. But without doing that, there's no way they can kill him. They only have one lockdown. And uh, the Timbersaw does not yet do enough nuke damage to kill him straight away. Rubik's going to walk down. Miguel's out here and forward. The big Chakram coming through, but it's just not enough damage at this point. Puck is actually going after Ocelot. He's going to nicely phase shift out of that damage and jump to the orb. He's gone up. 
The bottle charge is being used. He's going to try and snipe out Rubik behind the tower, but he's already using a flask. They, they know he's there, and they know why he's coming. The orbs is, should spot him out, but Ocelot now at oh. basically three quarters health. And a nice orb out. He knew he couldn't get it, knew exactly when he needed to go through, and Miguel just playing an amazing puck right now. Yeah, and we saw a little engagement on bot onto the archer as well, but the uh, cooldown did miss. So not being able to lock down that clockwork. And now that they're pushing, clockwork's getting experience. I think rather than even going aggressive at all, just keep that creep prolibium right back and just keep him off this lane. You can have a level one clockwork at eight minutes. It, he's like a free kill every time they choose to kill him uh, once they actually start pressuring anything quite hard. But the only problem with doing the safe now is that this Wisp is almost level 6. And at 8 minutes, that's really scary. You want that to happen at, you know, 13, 14, 15 minute mark. Because he is a support and generally you go aggressive against them. But with this up so quickly, with Bok Choy having that free farm, as soon as he gets that armlet, or even before, Garo is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think any of these lanes are in a lot of trouble. I wouldn't be surprised to see some aggressive warden coming out of the dire. Just throwing out a warden in kind of this area to spot out Darkseer's rotations to the jungle, as well as just general rotations into that bottom lane. I think it's something that they could definitely exploit. And, I, you know, Wisp has hit level 6 now, so I think they're going to be looking for some ganks now. You know, as soon as the Radiant go in for a kill, they're instantly going to be counter-ganked by a CK and a Wisp. Yeah, and you just had a, a little bit of lag on the stream two minutes ago, so I'm not sure what that was, but I'm just checking with the stream chat now to make sure there's no lag or anything, and apparently you've only hit one spike, so that's pretty good so far. Yeah, I think I uh, I alt-tabbed Tabbed. for a moment, and then Probably. realized I meant to press uh, up arrow or down arrow instead of alt-tab, so that would be why. But all good. We're going to see a surge in on the next. He's going for this timber saw, but it's not going to be in time. Still scuttling too slow. We're going to see a Wisp relocate onto the bottom lane. Tonda's in a lot of trouble. He's going to throw out the cooldown. Wisp also dropping low, but Tonda's will go down to one more right click. The stun misses on Wisp, but now Archer getting slowed. Does go down to the counter. Trying to get out of these cogs is kilted. But Wisp and CK are just going to go back to top lane. And now they can start pressuring that top tower. And that's exactly what happens. In fact, Clockwork having a weird buyback visual bug on my screen radiance mid tower he didn't buy back on my screen yeah no i've got the buyback coins there in fact <laughs> oh, you've got the... there now yeah yeah that's that's pretty fun when that happens because now you won't radiance know if they've actually tower. bought back exactly. but uh, yeah good gank and i mean they traded a support for it but kill the carry for a support carry didn't even get expand they're actually oh. going to go on bok Choy again on top he's come to the wrong lane here and the tp is coming through maybe with a little bit of chitin there will be the uh, puck coming in now, but the Rubik is there on the back end. He is going to be able to pick up the evil twig. Ulti goes down from Miggles and managed to clean up Wisp and CK on the back end. Yeah, so... one of the kills going to Darks here. So not a double kill, unfortunately, for the item drops. But Miguel just doing so much work. We're going to see a 10 minute, 45 second blink dagger. And that's just some great timing from your mid laner. Especially when the opponent mid just has mana boots. Yeah, he's done really well in this matchup, and as he should, really. He should not lose the matchup, but no one really expects him to do that well. I mean, he's he dominated this matchup mid, and even got that next to the first blood. So really well done there, and even though that TP took so long for him to get there, because the Darkseid oh, got we're there. Gonna we're going to see a relocate really gank on bottom lane. Tondas is in trouble. The cooldown gets thrown out straight away, but he just gets instantly exploded. The damage coming out from this combo, and Lethal's just going to walk into it as well. He has hit level 6, but it's just not enough. One second, and they do get out. Vacuum comes in a second too late, and it's another successful relocate gank. And yeah, an armlet completed for Bok Choy. You know the yeah, I was about to say, this is when it gets scary. It wasn't that scary before, even though it was working really well, but now you have the armlet damage on top. Uh, and once he hits level 11, he'll have that two levels in Phantasm, and that's when it gets really dangerous for the Garo top jar. I mean, he's been neutered. He had free farm, 58 CS, not even that far behind the Chaos Knight now, but he's died twice. And the Chaos Knight hasn't died, and he's... Oh, he has died, sorry. He's 1-1-2, but still, your Chaos Knight, this is where he's at now. He's got armlet treads. He doesn't need anything else for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe throw in a set of drums, and, and you're all good until a heart. We're going to see a blink in from Miguel. Instantly explodes the Rubik. 
In come Chaos Knight and Wisp, but he's just going to jump out. And it's going to be a nice pickoff there from Puck. But did expend the ultimate to get that, so it won't be available if they want to try and defend this mid tower if it's pressured. Yeah, they should really try and pressure the towers while that's down, but we're going to see initiation on Archer down bot. He's going to get the cogs off to keep the Gyrocopter out. Ulti is going to drop, followed by the stun from the Visage, but TP is here though from Selena Gomez on that Timbersaw. Relocate also coming in a little bit far behind. The uh, Reality Rift does catch him, and he's instantly popped just from that timber chain and the whirling death coming out plus the chakram but that was just sort of sitting over there but another nice relocate gank and they're three for three on these ganks they've gotten a kill every time they've gone for one yeah wisp and and ck are just playing really well together i mean ck isn't just finding these kills he's farming in between he's been going to the jungle with wisp he's been going into the lane getting kills when he can in fact darkseer might be in trouble now here comes bok choy with the reality rift combo already and another four second stun rngg this guy is the stun lord i haven't seen him get a i didn't see him ever get a one second i always get one second <laughs> where uh, are our is... four second stuns oh miguel is gonna exactly. blink in in middle ocelot in a lot of trouble one more last right click but miguel gets lifted up and the ultimate even getting thrown out on a kill on a rubik that's uh that's the screw you for lifting me dream coil that is <laughs> that was all spite you. that was all spite <laughs> but uh kill secured and i mean if you don't see them pushing then uh, you might as well, and these couriers just sort of hanging out together. <laughs> just saying, hey, Chilling. how's it going, bro? Oh, pretty hey, good. Hey, man. We're neutral. We're not going to attack each other. They got one damage. Oh, I'd like to see a courier war if they could actually attack each other. That'd be awesome. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's basically <laughs> just who attacks first. It, it, no, well, because you can kite them and stuff, and like dodge Animation them and, and attack. Yeah, man. <laughs> you could, that could be hardcore. It needs to be a custom map for Dota 2. Courier fights. Nyx does pick up the mana boots. We do have the mechanism soon to be flying out to Evil Twig, I believe. In fact, I thought he had it. No, sorry. He just had a recipe for a headdress, which uh, he didn't pick up. Um, but he will have the mechanism in 300 gold. Still doesn't have his boots, though, so it's going to be slightly harder for him to get into these engagements because ideally you're going to be surging the Nyx forward for a stun. I guess it, it's all situational, but Darkseer not having those boots is going to cost him slightly. And this Ancient stack is getting bigger and bigger for the Radiant. So far, the Dyer haven't spotted it out, and it's something that could be very dangerous. I mean, CK is decently tanky, and Kate can definitely take quite a few hits from those Ancients with a Wisp Overcharge on him. So they need to be careful it isn't stolen. Yeah, and the, the one problem with that stack is that Garacopter can't kill it yet. He'd have to have his whole team there supporting him to try and clear it off. Sure, he can slowly do it, but that's not how you want to do it. You want to get in there, kill them, get out, stack it again. And He's been so neutered that he won't be able to kill it for a while. And he's struggling to even kill these stacks in the jungle, and he's using his ulti just to clear normal double stacks. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be sitting there for a while. He's got to get his BKB up next. If he goes to the helm, that's probably just going to mean he's dead. Yeah, I, I think it... It really does. He needs some big damage to kind of take off these supports in fights, but in saying that, he kind of needs the BKB first, because these stuns from Chaos Knight and Wisp are just obliterating him instantly. Down on bottom, Archer might be in a bit of trouble. He's going to use the phase boots, Kilted trying to get in range for a stun, is there now, but getting juked around the trees, a relocate gank is going to come in. And Archer will spot out Kilted. Miguel's is going to get a kill on the other side of things. But in fact, CK and Wisp going for lethal. He's going to drop the ultimate. Bok Choy getting hit down. Gyrocopter's just in the back end. The relocate gank fails. They get out of there, but Clockwork does go down. So, an kind of an unsuccessful counter gank there. Clockwork still going down and not managing to pick up a kill. And... All five of the Radiant now in bottom lane. Mechanism was used, and they should be able to uh, do a tiny bit of damage to this Can't tower, but... I mean, right with Timbersaw pulling off the aggro like that, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Yeah, and that was really nice by uh, Rest. I mean, uh, TOA had no idea that they were going to be that close to Carapace actually coming off from uh, Kelted on that Nyx, and they might... Have, oh, nice stun coming out from Ocelot. Just to stop that aggression coming out. Megal's getting on very low health, but he's going to get out of there. And they are going to take the tower. 
So not all is lost and not all is bad. The tower for two deaths, the Rubik did die in the river. Ooh, and a Versace uh, familiar will go down, but it's to the Dire team, so... I'm not too sure if the gold for that gets split. Unfortunately, Rubik got a last hit in between two tower shots, so didn't claim the 100 gold for himself. Man, that 100 gold, so good on a support. And I mean, during all of this, even though the gank failed, Chaos Knight is still getting closer and closer to having that BKB. He already has the Ogre Club sitting on about 700 gold, so it's not too far away from him. We should be seeing that in the next kind of five minutes. Yeah, definitely. And it all just seems like rest now. They've got a turtle, but then if they turtle, the, the CK is going to have a bit of fun. But they need the gyro BKB. They need the wall up from this dark here. I'm actually really surprised uh, he didn't get it earlier because against TOA, you look at that team and you go, they're going to be ganking. They're, they're going to be there. So a, a wall Ooh, pick Tundas up earlier might be in a bit of trouble. Nice. No, he's going to deny off that haste rune. A nice little deny there. So it gets himself out of out of trouble. Yeah, and I'm I'm not really sure about the Darkseer build. I would have liked to see Wall picked up earlier. Miggle's actually picking up a Dagon now. It's definitely gonna give him more burst against the Wisp. I think just kind of the point of that is to kill off Wisp as soon as you can. I mean you have Nyx coming in. In fact they might be looking to go on Selena Gomez right now. We can see a blink in from the puck. He's sitting on the low ground, but he will be spotted out by a rocket flare. And Nyx might be caught here. In fact, Clockwork going to hook in. He's going to find them, but the Dagon instantly kills him. A relocate coming through. Evil Twig is going to run right into the Tether Stun. But we see an oh. ultimate thrown down by Puck, as well as a mech from Darkseer. Oh. And Miguel getting 1k ping. Can I just say feed on pause and all chat? <laughs> oh my god. That is... Oh, wow. Okay. Even though that pause happened, there's nothing else that can happen right now except Selena Gomez maybe taking a bit of damage, but Kilter's probably going to die on the back end. Like, he nothing has, has been changed by this pause. Yeah, he still Just has so the everyone can see that nothing's but changed. that's about it. <laughs> yeah, nothing's actually changed by this pause. But that, that timing on the pause was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are going to see the spike carapace, but it just delays the inevitable. Nyx Assassin does go down in the wall, even getting dropped there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, not really sure what that wall was for. Yeah, just kind of a wisp and a timber saw is not going to do too much for you. And Miguel didn't have the ultimate anymore, so it was kind of unlikely to see a reinitiation, especially with Dagon on cooldown and, you know, virtually no mana. Um, he did have enough for a combo before, but not anymore. And they do know the relocate is down, so this is what you kind of have to do. It's kind of semi-rat, but we are going to see the CK come through, and Lethal is in a lot of trouble if he gets caught. We're going to see a nice three-man familiar stun from Visage, and it's going to stop any kind of future engagement. And I think they... Oh, he already resummoned them. They're both going to... No, only one. I think their Dyer got a little bit greedy. They went for the puck that's been evading them all game when they had a really easy support kill on their hands. Like... CK just had to walk forward and Rage Reality Rift, which he was in range for, and he decided to go for the puck instead. <laughs> and the Visage Familiar just going to fly back into them, <laughs> get a nice triple stun again, and he's going to try and run away. They're not going to go for this Familiar stun, thinking it might be bait. And they'd definitely be right. We're going to see a blink in from Puck, but he's going to instantly jump back. Nice play from Miguel, definitely knowing Puck well. Instantly throwing the orb backwards so he could disengage when he needed to. Yeah, and they're sort of all at a standstill, but meanwhile, Tondas is farming, and this is exactly what they want to do for now. Once this BKB is up, Gyrocopter will be a lot safer. So they're just putting pressure on, and with a puck, you can do that, especially with Dagon. Uh, you know, one of the big things about Dagon is a lot of people just say, you know, oh, you only get it if you're ahead or if you're, you know, being stupid, but a puck with a Dagon, that Wisp is instantly dead. The Rubik is instantly dead. The Clockwork takes almost all of his health from all those nukes, and it's actually a very good item for stalling, because, you know, they want to come in, instant 400 damage on a support. They can't stay there anymore. Yeah, it really picks them out in a bad spot. I mean, we'll probably see Puck go for kind of more standard items, and that's exactly what he just did. Blinking forward and taking out the Rubik, just finding these pickoffs, and the Dyer are much less likely to go in for a fight when it's 4 versus 5. Miguel now yeah. deep in enemy territory, and he needs to be careful. 
He's going to blink down and TP out instantly. The hook's not going to be there, so he's going to get away scot-free, and that's an instant support kill. Uh, yeah, really nice plays from this puck coming out, and you can really tell that he's had a lot of practice on this. Probably a lot of pub stomping as well, because he's gone the Dagon build, and that's generally, you know, the fun pub build. You can get kills with it, and it's, it's more interesting. I'd like to see him grab the Hex next, maybe even an Orchid, but uh, I think the Hex would definitely uh, be a little bit better so he can grab this Chaos Knight when he doesn't have his BKB on. But speaking of BKBs, that BKB is only 700 away for him now. And uh, Tondas will have his up in 450. So after the stack, if they can clear this, he'll have his BKB up. Yeah, a lot of enemies at the moment. And the nerf to Flak Cannon really, really hurts Gyrocopter now. When it was 20 seconds, it was so easy to basically take down a whole stack in, you know, a, a matter of seconds, but even that extra 10 seconds really adds up, and it puts you in a bad spot for longer. Like, 10 seconds in the world of Dota, that's an entire team fight gone. If you're just kind of sitting around not doing anything, just waiting for a cooldown of Flat Cannon, it can actually hurt you quite a bit. It doesn't look like they're going to pay for it now, just, you know, because of circumstances, but it, it's still something that was kind of a lot bigger than people really take credit for with Flat Cannon. Yeah, well, it's definitely a big nerf to Flat Cannon. I think one of the biggest things was that you could have it, wait for a little while, use it, and then it would already be off cooldown. But now the cooldown's 30 seconds, and it only lasts for 15, you know. You could use it, and it would last for 15 seconds, hit five times, and then click it again. So you'd have 12 attacks against everything. And that... You know, in a team fight, that was insane. Trouble brewing yeah, it's complete down. domination. I mean, Timbersaw, he's getting closer to his soul, uh, his uh, Bloodstone, rather. And we're going to see Puck actually upgrading that Dagon. So he's got level 2 now. Maybe wanting to go for instant pickoffs on the Clockwork as well. So, I mean, Timbersaw also is decently weak to Magic Burst. If he doesn't get something up like a, like a Cloak or even a Hood, maybe into a Pipe before getting that uh, Bloodstone, he leaves himself quite open, and we're going to see a Spike Carapace. Selena Gomez gets instantly jumped on, and you can see the burst damage coming into effect. So we're going to see a hook. Lethal getting attacked now. Cooldown coming out as well. And the instant buyback from Gomez as well. And Visage is actually going to kill off the Clockwork. Chaos Knight getting a kill on the back end. Lethal actually picking up two. And we're going to see Bok Choy. One more shot needed. He gets a double kill. Puck is trying to run away, but he's not going to be able to. Oh. He's going to get Selena Gomez. Is it going to be a dieback? He does die back. Bok Choy coming in with a four-second stun. You can't blink away when you are stunned. It's a triple kill. Now Evil Twig trying to kill off Ocelot. We're going to see a nice double familiar stun. It might set it up for him. He needs to get another couple of shots, but he's not going to be able to reach it. Big crits and a three-second stun. It's an ultra kill for Bok Choy, even toggling that armlet to get away. And these familiars are trying to pick up a double kill under this tower, but I think Bok Choy is just going to be able to get away. Yeah, and Tonda's just escaping that. Made that not a complete wipe. Uh, he was running down the end, and he actually turned against the uh, Timbersaur and managed to pick him off. And he was sitting on... Uh, just by this bottom rune, he was sitting on about 60 health, and the Chakram was like a Radiant centimeter away from him on my screen, just from clipping him that extra damage, so nice little play there, picking up that kill uh, was definitely good, but uh, giving an ultra kill to a CK, now with his BKB, and with 2.1k, I'd like to see a, uh, a Manta style out of him this game. Even though the flat cannon's there, and sure, they have a bit of AoE. The chaos it's going to create in this fight, and with Cogs, and with the Timbersaw, they're all very chaotic in a fight. You can just confuse the enemy so much, you know, they won't know what to target straight away. They might even have to invest in something like a jam or a lot of sentries, and I think it'll work out well. Uh, Heart would probably be the normal pickup for this game, though, right now. But uh, it all depends what they want to do. Well, we're going to see Bok Choy initiated on here. In comes the burst damage. Wisp trying to save him. He even initiates the BKB, his armlet toggling for his life. Lethal taking a lot of damage. We'll go down to one more right click. The wall coming up, but the BKB still up. Miguel going, gonna go down to one more right click, but does escape. Miguel dropping low, does go down. Tonda's managing to go on a killing spree, taking out the Wisp and the CK. 
And they're running for their lives. Archer might go down here as well, but Tondas needs to be very careful. We have a Timbersaw in looking for a way in. He needs to throw out the Sharkrim, but it's still on cooldown. He's going to get surged away. Ocelot can't get in range to lift him up. And that, those Visage Familiars are just searching for Archer, who looks the like he's actually going to go down to a rocket. He does. The rocket picks up a kill, but just too late to get that triple kill status. So a nice team fight. Both, I gotta say, it kind of goes the way of rest because their uh, their carry didn't die. So uh, yeah, it, a nice pick it up definitely there. definitely went in their way, and that, my friends, is why you max homing missile <laughs> because that destroyed him. Without that, he wouldn't have got that kill because he was over the threshold of We're the level one, and that's where you normally see trouble. Throws out the vendetta. We're gonna see a. Uh, Kind of counter initiation from the Darkseer, but he got instantly stunned up by the tether. A little unfortunate. A vacuum kind of hitting on nothing at all. A rocket is going out on Ocelot. We're going to see a three second stun onto Gyrocopter, but he's a bit too far out of the way, and Ocelot eats a ton of damage from that rocket. Yeah, and that rocket can really force out these supports. They'll have to target it quite well and get rid of it because it is doing so much damage. At that top level, really does a lot, and it's a long stun. I mean, it's 2.2 at the first level, but last level 2.8. You know, almost a three seconds done at the max rage of the missile, which is uh, 1500 and um, 440 damage. It's a lot to come out, and that's pretty scary to uh, Ocelot or Top Xeno. I mean, it really is. If, if we look at the experience graph now, it was well in the way of rest, but coming back sort of in favor of TOE in these last few engagements. In fact, we're going to see an engagement in mid. Kilted is going to throw out the spike carapace. Selena Gomez now in trouble. Gets reality rifted back. A big vac wall into a cooldown. The BKB is activated. Bok Choi is still living. But the supports on the side of the Dyer do go down. A triple kill for Lethal. And Bok Choi now in trouble. He's taking so much damage. Trying to pick up Evil Twig but doesn't go down. And it's a complete team wipe under the T1 tower. And the change of this game when Tonda's picked up that BKB. They just have nothing to answer for him. That flat cannon and the cooldown absolutely shredding through them. And Miggle's play, or M Miguel, or Miguel Z, or whatever, is absolutely fantastic in these fights. And he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows who to target with the Dagon, you know. You can save it for the CK when he's trying to armor it all, just instantly get it. Uh, once he's sitting on, you know, 200 health. And they're just dominating these fights now. And we saw them just before come out even, and now five for one. So that's that's definitely the turn of this game. And with wall up, vacuum, and uh, cooldown, and all the pucks AOE, if it's all up, uh, TOA can't take a fight anymore unless the CK gets a lot more items. It was just way too much damage for them to handle. And it looks like Tondas is even going for the butterfly. So. Unless CK gets up the MKB, there's really no answer. I mean, he's going to BKB, dodge all of the magic damage. Timbersaw can't do anything. Uh, Rubik, Clockwork, basically no one can do anything apart from the illusions of the CK with right-click damage. And if you have a butterfly, that evasion really, really hurts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the things is butterfly is kind of an item some like and some dislike on Jajaro. Attack speed is not generally what you want because of the flat cannon. You want the pure damage coming out of it because obviously it's a uh, max attacks, not a max time. But the evasion, the armor, and the damage that you get from a butterfly for this game is fantastic. You hit BKB, you've got a butterfly, you don't take any damage. Nothing hurts you. So instead of, you know, investing all your gold into a satanic, you can just get a butterfly and it's better in my opinion, than uh, grabbing the satanic. Yeah, definitely for this game, I would agree with you 100%. I mean, Butterfly, is it's not like it's that low of a damage item. I mean, MKB is, what, 75, 80 damage, whereas Butterfly 60, 60. But yeah. you get all of the evasion as well. And uh, as we were saying before, if you've got the BKB, the only thing that's going to be hurting you is right clicks. New to the right clicks. It, it's just kind of a, a no-brain pickup for, for this game, at least, I think. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the right pickup for this game. Uh, I think we can both agree there. We do have Kilted, still desperately poor. Poor little Nyx there. I thought maybe he's got a bit of an item progression, but no, he's just got Sentry Wards now. It reminds me of Moops. No matter how much you're winning, you still don't have any money. It's, he's it's like the that sixth, sixth position, yeah. Yeah, he's the sixth. He doesn't get anything. 
It's like, oh yeah, what's the score? 30 to 2? What do you have? Boots. <laughs> Boots and a ward. Oh yeah. Lethal, meanwhile, picking up his Aghanim Scepter, so we're gonna be able to see some triple stuns from the familiars out of this, as well as a lot of pushing power. Like, kind of the... The familiars are often overlooked for the just sheer, sheer amount of burst damage that they can do to towers, and, and even in team fights as well to heroes, if you're kind of really good at managing them, you can get off a full set of three attacks, re-summon them, get another full set of three attacks, and then stun. Or you can even stun, then re-summon, so you get the attacks and and stuns in, and, and that's kind of the hallmark of a good Visage play, being able to, to take care of these. Uh, we're going to see a smoke up from Dai, but it's going to be spotted out by the sentry wards. Tondas needs to run away. Ocelot comes through. The lift is going to come off. He needs to pop that BKB, which he does. The cooldown getting thrown out. A nice facade from Milius done, but in comes the relocate. Evil Twig is going to go down instantly, and Lethal now in a lot of trouble. A two-second stun. Tether stun also hitting, and Lethal is dropping down fast. It's a nice smoke gank. Wisp does go down to pay. But, I mean, that's a two-for-one trade when you're only trading a Wisp. In fact, a three-for-one oh, yeah. <laughs> trade catches the Nyx Assassin. And now Tondas is going to go down as well. It's a four-for-one and a triple kill for the CK. Now Miguel's coming in. Oh. He's going to pick up one kill. Two kills. Triple it's a triple kill for Miguel's. And now Bok Choy getting stunned out by these familiars. Some excellent chaining coming out from Basage. A two-second stun, and he's going to try and go in for it. Bok Choy has the armlet and a reaver. He should be able to last through the fight so far. And we're not going to see stuns out. And unfortunately, four staff not breaking TP. So he's going to get out of there scot-free. Megal. Megal is so manly. It's ridiculous. He jumps into four people after they've completely lost a team fight and gets a triple kill. And doesn't even break a sweat. Just That, that made that complete fight not really, really bad. I mean, it, they was, lost it was basically, what, a 4 for 1, and then he just comes in and makes it a 4 for 4. Yep. This, this guy is pretty insane. I don't know if it's just on Puck, but uh, I like him what I'm seeing so far, and he's he's pretty rich, too. If we take a look at the net worth, he's under the CK by 900 gold, and so is the Gyrocopter. And then you look at the Timbersaw, who was the other mid, and Puck is doubling him. It's not like, only that, it, it's... I mean, look at the distribution of wealth. You have basically almost the entire Radiant team in between the top and second farmer of Dyer. The only kind of loser there is the Nyx, as we said, playing the poor, poor support. It's, it's just insane kind of how far ahead they are in that regard. If you take a look at the gold graph, it's kind of reflected there. About 11k gold ahead. If you look at experience, also rest being almost 12k ahead, so... I think Dai definitely have an uphill battle from here, but they're not out at all. That CK does have a lot of farm. He has completed a heart now. We're going to see a dream coil on everyone. Bok Choy throwing out the BKB. Miguel in a bit of trouble there. Does go down. In fact, Nyx and Jaira are going to be picking up some counter kills. A double kill. Excellent wall there. Archer is dropping low as well. We're going to see a kill for the CK. Lethal gets three seconds stunned, but these familiars are doing their work. Goes down to some big crits. Almost 800 damage there. And the Reality Rift is going to pick up another kill. It's a triple kill. These team fights are just insane. We're seeing three or four or more dropping every fight. And we're going to see CK drop to Tondas, who has the gold to finish off that butterfly. I don't know if he oh, will. But, I mean, these team fights are just insane. And that... It's another 4 for 4 trade. What happened there is that they couldn't kill the CK. And CK was like the only one basically doing anything for quite a while. And he was just standing there killing everyone. And Gyrocopter was actually downhill. And he was missing quite a lot of attacks on the CK. So not being able to get him there was definitely hurting them a little bit. Managing to clean him up at the end, fine. So that's a 5 for 4 because uh, Timbersaw did buy back. So, going the way of rest again, and not losing their carry, so... Picking up level 21 against the 20 of CK, so not really that big a deal, but... I mean, if you look at the experience graph, 12k ahead now, and the gold... Hasn't really moved up yet, maybe not updated on mine, but still sitting at 11k. Butterflies finished, and another 1500 gold. Just, just another 1500, after that massive fight. Yeah, it's quite insane, the, the farm that kind of everyone is getting in this game. 
If you take a look at net worth, we see the gyrocopter finally on top of that net worth graph gets over the CK by 400 gold, uh, which is bad news. CK is basically the only thing keeping the diet in these fights right now. The heart was definitely a great pickup. He's got 1.3k gold, so the death, you know, while hurting him, wasn't horrible. He still has a, a tiny bit of farm, but, you know, is now the time where Dyer try and get into that Roshan pit to, to kind of secure an Aegis, maybe put it on the Timbersaw to give Chaos Knight a fighting partner. I mean, Chaos Knight's always going to be the last to go down in these engagements, so I don't know if an Aegis would be 100% useful on him. Um, but, you know, meanwhile, I think it's still maybe better on him than on Timbersaw because at the moment, CK is really the only one doing anything in these team fights, apart from the kind of, of course, the utility that the stuns provided by Wisp and, and Rubik, as well as kind of area denial from from the clockwork. Yeah, I think if they can grab a wall or a uh, puck ulti, the team fight can go their way, but. Other than that, it's definitely leading in the way of Fresh Refresh being in command, and they know this Roshan's about to happen, uh, as they are, getting banged up. Uh, like, right on top of his entry, so it will give them the vision they did run on it. Um, so, they are smoked up here, and just waiting to get in there. We are going to see Bok Choy and Tobzino go straight in. The Radiant should definitely know something's up. We're going to see one single Visage Familiar come in and scout it out. They do definitely know what's going on, and at the moment, they're just going to back off. They know that they can't take a team fight, especially in the Roshan pit, where all of those AoE spells are just basically 100% guaranteed to hit, and they're not willing to take a fight there at all. They know the side lanes are starting to kind of push in a little bit too. Tonda's doing some great work on that bottom lane, but... They just can't take the Roshan right now. In fact, we're going to see a relocate gank in the back lines. The wall instantly dropped down. Archer dropping low already. Blown up. Tobzino dropping as well. Bok Choy, the only one alive. Darkseer does go down. And now Bok Choy taking too much damage. He's going to have to retreat. Ocelot trying to cover that retreat. The rocket will come out onto Selena Gomez. And Tondas is manning up. Miguel's comes forward as well. A two-second stun. Tondas, the BKB not available, but throwing out the rocket barrage. The CK does go down, so it's going to be a 1 for 4 trade. And Rest is just really starting to roll right now. I think they should take this tower and just rotate into the Roshan pit. Yeah, take the tower, take the Rosh, even break high ground. They could actually just take the tier 3 right now. And I think that's what they're going to do. CK's down for so long. He does he have does a have buyback. buyback. So I force that out back, I guess. I mean, even if, if he doesn't buy back, they'll lose a tier 3, and if he does, you're forced out of buyback. Well, the problem does... is, no one else can buy back, so it's just him, and it would just be him and the Rubik, and I guess Timbersaw and CK now. But we're going to see Miguel's jump in. Ocelot does go down, but he goes down for his trouble, so uh, a bit too ballsy from Puck on that occasion is going to pay for his life just for a Puck kill, just for a Rubik kill, rather, and that's definitely favorable for the Dyer. Yeah, definitely uh, grabbing something there. And killing Miggle's very high priority target. Especially because he's such a high level as well. Giving it a lot of experience away. So, uh, little wins. Little wins. I mean... And Tonda's now sitting on 5k. Probably going to pick up the MKB. I don't think he needs a Satanic in this game. Uh, I mean, he's just so tanky with the Butterfly. 4 second BKB. You just dodge that first lot of nuking power. And that's all he really needs to do. So, uh, he, he could buy a new one, but I, 